Hi everyone, it's Miss Aaliyah here from the Home with Public Library and welcome to another installment of Black History Spotlight. No, Black History Spotlight is a series where we shine our light on some amazing black figures, both from our past and those in our present. Today, we are shining our light on a woman who accomplished so much at such a young age. This is a black woman. At even the age of 14, she became one of the first African American teachers to teach in the South at 14 years old. This woman knocked down every barrier that was stacked up against her in order to accomplish so much, not just for herself, but to accomplish so much for her race. Today, we shine our light on Miss Susie King Taylor. All right, so let's get into this. Susie King Taylor was born into slavery in 1848 in Liberty County, Georgia. She lived on a plantation for the first seven years of her life. Though Susie was enslaved, her grandmother, Dolly Reed, was actually a free woman that was living in Savannah. In 1855, Susie got the opportunity to go live with her grandmother in Savannah. And that's where her life changed. Living in Georgia as a black woman was not easy. Despite Georgia's harsh laws prohibiting formal education for African American children, Susie was able to attend two secret schools that were taught by black women and she was tutored by two white youths. Those secret schools or secret schooling is called clandestine schooling. Clandestine schooling was the only way for African American children to receive an education in the South. Can you imagine having to sneak and go to school because other people would not want you to go to school or did not want you to obtain an education. Having to attend school in secret did not stop Susie from obtaining her education. She accomplished so much in the field of education, even surpassing the level of knowledge of her first teachers in Georgia. Unfortunately, by the time the Civil War broke out, Susie was sent back to her plantation where life became painfully hard and even dangerous for her. In April 1862, Susie and her uncle escaped slavery along with other African Americans to a Federal Union gunboat. They fled to St. Catharines Island, later traveling to Union-occupied St. Simons Island off the southern Georgia coast. So, while aboard the gunboat, Susie impressed the ship's commander and his officers with her reading, writing, and sewing abilities. Now, these abilities and skills were not often taught to African American women in the South. Immediately, ship's commander arranges for Susie a teaching position at a children's school. At the children's school during the day, Susie would teach reading and writing to upwards of 40 children. And during the night, she would teach the adults that came to see her. At 14 years old, yes, at 14, Susie became the first black teacher known to openly teach and educate African American children in the South. That same year when Susie accomplished this major feat, she found love and she married Edward King, who was a black officer in one of the first African-American regiments, the 33rd U.S. Colored Troops Infantry Regiment. But Susie couldn't just let her husband have all the fun. <laughs> she joined the regiment herself, serving as a nurse and a laundress. Though she was called and labeled a laundress, her work extended into the realm of gun maintenance, nursing, and education. Off hours, she taught the soldiers reading and writing. And according to her memoir, she even said that she learned how to handle a musket very well and could shoot straight and often hit the target. But that's not all Miss Susie did. She even served as a nurse at a hospital for African-American soldiers in South Carolina. And this is where she met and worked with Clara Barton. Susie served in the Union military without pay, no money no income, and remain with the 33rd Regiment until she and Edward were mustered out by the end of the war. She and Edward then moved to Savannah in 1866 to start a new life. It's in Savannah that she opened up her first school for African American children. But unfortunately, a few months later, Edward tragically passed away even before their first child was born. Due to the steady opening of public schools in Savannah, Susie could not earn enough money to take care of her family 
and was barely making ends meet in her teaching position. So sadly, she had to close down her school and was forced to become a domestic servant for a wealthy family. In 1870, Susie and this wealthy family moved to Boston and it seemed to her that Boston became a haven for her life to get better. It was in Boston that she met her second husband, Russell Taylor. Life became better for Susie in Boston. She served with the Women's Relief Corps and even became president of her corps. She also began her career as an author, writing about her experiences in the Civil War. But listen, she didn't stop there. She also began her career as an author, writing about her experiences in the Civil War. The book that she wrote is called Reminiscences of My Life in Camp with the 33rd United States Colored Troops, comma, late first South Carolina Volunteers. Say that five times really fast and let me know if, you, if it works. Susie King Taylor is the prime example of what it looks like to not give up. To not give up in spite of the obstacles and hindrances that wants to hold you back that wants to keep you down, that wants you to quit. She shows us what it looks like to never give up on your passion and your love. Susie King Taylor was able to accomplish major feats in her life. Not only being the first African-American teacher in the South to openly teach in the South at the age of 14, be the first African-American nurse in the Civil War, to be the first and only African-American woman to share her story and to publish a book about her experiences in the Civil War. Susie King Taylor accomplished so much more for us, the future generations that are trying to follow in her footsteps. We shine our light on you, Miss Susie King Taylor. I hope you enjoyed this installment of Black History Spotlight. Oh my gosh, didn't her story blow your mind? If you're craving more of Susie King Taylor or even more understanding and information about other African American figures that we talked about, visit us at the Homewood Public Library Monday through Saturday from 10 to 2. Or you can check out our website, homewoodpubliclibrary.org, and you can visit and browse our bookshelves online without coming out the house. Yes, there you can find all the books that we have on Susie King Taylor. As always, happy reading.